Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to the eighth episode of Tiano, the last of Europe, and we're playing as German Goring. Uh, but right now, we're reading and talking and playing and destroying about around the Russian Empire, or Russian Empire, the former Russian little state. That's what am I looking for? Oh, I'm looking over here. Knights of the Panzer Corps. The distinguished and renowned Panzer Corps must be continuously reviewed and modernized if we are to truly succeed in creating a modern Blitzkrieg. And we'll outfit our Panzer Corps division with the finest wars in all of the German Reich. To ensure our campaigns against the degenerates of the world are successful. These prestigious knights shall be at the forefront of the German propaganda and shall be given various honors commending their bravery and heroics. Production cost goes down, huh? Ah, uh, cuff titles and new uniforms. The decline of militarism in the Reich has many deep causes, but one important reason is a growing lack of respect towards the officer class. To destroy such rude attitudes, the German people will be reminded of the differences between the average citizen and the brave generals who protect the Reich. In the Napoleonic Age, generals adorned themselves with gorgeous uniforms which manifested their nobility and dignity. Now we shall return to that old tradition by hiring the best designers. Our own Reich is at the fruitful relationship with Hugo Boss Company. And we shall look to them to create our new trappings of rank and office. As we still want to beat the crap out of these guys too, but it looks like we'll take some time to get there. Ah, uh, what is this? The Ringhorn Doctrine. Our fleet may be the greatest on Earth, but there's always room to improve, even now. The bastards in America and Japan race to build their fleets back up, attempting to take back the title of Masters of the Sea from us. If we simply sit back and rest on our own laurels, as they did when we caught up to them, we will once again find ourselves outclassed, outgunned, outmaneuvered, and innovative thought is required. Luckily, we have the greatest source of innovative thought on Earth, and his name is Hermann Goring, our big daddy. And another brilliant display of his intellect has proposed a new plan to keep the Kriegsmarine one step ahead of the American and Japanese dogs, the Ringhorn Doctrine. Essentially, the doctrine is running the, the content of bigger is better. What better way to outclass those that challenge us than with the largest, ba biggest ships on Earth? Not only will we save a manpower, one captain on a super battleship can possibly put as much firepower out as three on three normal battleships, but will truly have the prides of the fleet to look proudly upon. Our ships will block out the sun, and the enemy shall submit to our will or be crushed under our keel. For now, however, our ambitions must be more humble. Our harbors, as great as they are, are simply not able to take on raw tonnage of these gigantic hulks. We must upgrade our facilities to the high standard if we wish to accommodate the raw power of the new class, a ship. Absolutely. Sort of good, huh? At this point, miles ago, I didn't join him over there. Over there yet? Is that all we need, or where are we ending up? Hmm. Oh, which one do we want? Match for them, huh? That's pretty good. Super carriers? Your average carrier can launch dozens of planes at a time, sending them far and wide to find and destroy the enemy. Such pathetic apple will be spit upon by our new design, the super carrier. According to the blueprints, these gigantic boats will have the room and capabilities to not only store but launch hundreds of planes. If our enemies think about that simply one or two dozen planes isn't enough to get by in the new world of naval warfare, they've ought to think twice. We'll pay for the insolence when hundreds of bombers come swooping down and obliterating their puny ships. The cost of these gigantic characters, as one would expect, enormous after all. They're a hell of a project to build, however, it'll all be worth it. The look on the president's face when he sees wave after wave of bombers tearing apart his grand fleet will be worth a billion Reichsmarks alone. The age of the supercarriers here in Germany is once again to the forefront of the technological revolution. Happy January, everybody! As manpower is going down quite. Quickly, unfortunately. Alright. Come on, are we there yet? We should be there by now. And a lot, huh? Hmm. Take the people. With the occupation of Western Russia now completed, we can now establish a proper exploitation structure. All those who fought against us and the ones who refuse to submit even though they remain neutral shall be enslaved to the master race and put into camps where they'll be spend the rest of their lives toiling for the Reich and understanding the depth of their mistake. With the new extraction and production facilities, a war machine will be unstoppable. The inferiors should find comfort in the fact that their sacrifice will serve to elevate the Reich to even higher reaches of power and might. Yeah. So let's try to beat up now, these guys. Omsk. Um,
Fighters without equal. Time and time again, the Luftwaffe has proven themselves to be the utmost elite fighting force in the skies. Our fighter pilots outclass even the most veterans of our adversaries, showing the world that our pilots are a force to be reckoned with. The Luftwaffe has created some of the greatest pilots in history, and they should be recognized, or recognized and commended appropriately. Improved carrier hull. Advanced carrier hull. 25-1. 32-7. Of course, you got nothing on there. Anti air three. The speed increase, I'll take it. That advanced carrier hull A. So 327, 327, 34.2, 7, 3.4, 7, 3.5, 36, 12,000 range, 11,000, 375 HP, 5 armor, 5 armor, 64% reliability. Just in case. You really just never know, do you? Match of the sky. Even the greatest of pots can have humble beginnings, and by making this clear to the people, we can usher in a new age or era of German, elite German aces. The German people no longer see the path of becoming a pilot as unattainable or impossible, but rather as an honorable and worthy position given out to the best and the brightest Germans who are willing to give their all. Lightning strike, uh, strike like lightning. Fast as the wind and as swift as a soaring eagle, our close air support shall strike at the hearts of our enemies without, with fear and desperation. Before a counterattack can be arranged, our planes will swoop in and leap, uh, swoop in and out, leaving tremendous damage in our path. In their path, our enemies will never feel a moment of peace, as they will constantly have to worry about them pending an aerial assault from our fighter pilots. Higher, faster, better. While our pilots are already considered elite and highly trained, their combat abilities could be further enhanced and with better fighters. German engineers must be put to the task of developing faster and more agile fighters in order to better suit our pilots. With the power of German innovation and ingenuity, our enemies will be torn to shreds while we fly higher than we ever had before. Destruction of nations. Our successful bombing campaigns in Africa and Russia proved us one thing, the complete and utter ability for our bombers to rain destruction upon our enemies. They have been left crippled and weak, crawling about like cockroaches, too scared to fight. It is pivotal that we continue to develop our bombers in order to ensure our enemies can never fully recover from the destruction left in our wake. Nice, nice. Ooh. Whoops, wrong button. How much do you get a month? 22,000, huh? The Balkans, calm down, people. Ooh, there are this many ships in our fleet and this many American ships. Zero. There are this many Japanese ships. We need 75% of the smallest enemy's navy. We need to zero and zero. I don't think we're going to actually really be able to do that, but okay. Sure, why not? That's uniform production, downgrade the rations, new helicopter reduction. Some more spending goes up. Because there's port. Decrease military concern. There you go. Draft Germans in the Luftwaffe. Increase the loyalty. More debt. Uh, 
I don't know how much the important that one is. No corruption, no debt, no problem. Higher, faster, better. What's not to love? I'm super close to finishing them off, but... There you go. We've done it. And supplies probably really bad. Compliance is not great. What's next after this? Because I'm sure supplies are god awful. Finish them off. Um, with most of Russia under control, we can now launch the most final offensive against the Siberian warlords. We need to be careful about the extreme weather and the logistics, but once we are prepared, our enemy will crumble easily. After all, Siberia is a depopulated region without any meaningful industrial development. Their army melt like snow in front of the Wehrmacht, and their hopes will be crushed like bird glass by the hammer of the Reich. I'm gonna do that real quick, but not really. And you know what, actually? How bad is compliance still? Or resistance? Ooh, some of the turrets are really bad. There we go. Let's attack him next. Four, two, four. as well. Rebuild we AA line. The Art Angolsk Astrakhan line was the target of Unternehmen ba uh, original target of the Unternehmen Barbarossa. A line cutting from Russia to the north and south along the Volga River. It was extensively fortified and served as a buffer against any attempt at either invading or bombing Germany from the east. However, due to the economic collapse in the 50s, it was left almost undefended and subsequently lost to the Second Russian War. Even though we managed to repel the offensive, the border was redrawn near to Muscovy. With the offensive triumph, we can now uh, reverse the shame. The AA line shall all be rebuilt as Saul were sent to now forever guarding Germany from her enemies. First step is to rebuild the forts and trenches, a sufficient measure for now as the Russians don't possess the means to properly threaten complex fortification systems. In due time, we shall complete the work and the line will stand for a thousand years. As it should. A strategic defense. War on the age of nuclear weapons in many ways differs from pure conventional war. If we're to ensure that the Reich's defensive capabilities are up to the task, then we'll have to concentrate the existing expertise. Let's go on account of dealing with a strategic defense. The nuclear strategic rat shall serve us quite well. Pretty much. And we're going in doing a good old job so far. Take the people. Not good. Hey, look at that. Advanced Battleship A, hey. Who sits the chairman's chair? A goring poke at the pork dinner they have been brought to him in his office at the Reichskanzler lies and mine somewhere else. Heinz noticed his uncle's absent expression cut him, still thinking about the defense committee chairmanship. It seems like such a small thing to let distract you, at least to me. Goring shook his head to the side to the side. I wish it was just that simple. I wonder if this is what drove Adolf to his grave so early. His nephew swishes pork coolly, so what is going on then, if I might ask? Goran grunted uh, sardonically. It's what's well, always going on, the battle for power. I've played the game for decades now, but it's never been so grating. The chairmanship sh is just one piece of a larger puzzle. Shona would have placed me as p have me place General Tolsdorf in the position. 
I just raised an eyebrow as he finished his glass. I've met him before, I believe, at the War Cabinet meetings. He seems competent enough. Competence isn't the issue, Goring grumbled. He's fully committed to Shona, and I just can't let him think they can run the Reich under my nose. How'd I put you in charge, you know? They'd only throw a fit. Will Hines was plainly paying, a cl cl paying close attention now. I wouldn't reject such a position, but I can't say I really want Bloody Ferdinand to have a grudge against me. No, Goring agreed emphatically. No, you don't, Hines. His fingers began to drum on the table. What if we put Borman in? He owes everything to me, sure, but everyone knows how committed he is to the militarists. It would be a good compromise candidate. The fear turned to his nephew. What do you think, Hines? He's thinking this can't hurt. I think I'll take the job after all. Uh, best to go with Borman. Let's go with Borman. So, uh, crisis response teams. To survive any crisis means that we be properly organized, and since a nuclear war is the ultimate crisis imaginable, we need an organization that can handle this crisis. The fear has thus decreed the creation of so-called crisis response teams that are prepared and help the German people to survive anything our enemies can throw at us. Now look at this. Valkyrentruppen. The development of the helicopter transport has proven to be immensely beneficial to our troops on the ground, allowing the rapid relocation of both soldiers and supplies. Perhaps we should further pursue developing this technology in order to create a rapid response assault divisions to further mobilize the German war machine. The parachute is obsolete. As of late, it has become increasingly clear to the German High Command that the implementation of the parachute on the battlefield is dysfunctional and obsolete. Parachute runs have been proven to be far more dangerous than they are worth, and we simply cannot w risk wasting German lives on the battlefield. Instead, air assault divisions shall be utilized in order to uh, transport our troops on the ground and to provide tactical support to the Wehrmacht, and over any ground break any foe. From the dense African jungle to the sprawling fields of Russia, our Luftwaffe shall reign supreme. Regardless of the terrain, our fighter pilots will maneuver through skies and ally all those who stand in opposition to Germany. Build that wall! Mm. Once again, the fear found himself in the un 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 enviable position of hearing out the demands of Ferdinand Schoenau. A great map of Russia lay on the table, dug out from the archives all the way back from Operation Barbarossa for the purpose of illustrating some point. The map was, of course, hopelessly outdated, but Goring thought he could see the direction the conversation was being steered. And the conclusion of the whole operation, uncompleted until now, the Archangelsk Astrakhan line to complete the separation of Russia from Europe and ensure Germany has enough Lebensraum for centuries to come. And let me guess, you want me to refortify the AA line? Goring maintained a neutral expression, lacing his fingers together. He tried to quantify the manpower and resources required to finish the project, but gave up rapidly. Schroeder was unfazed by his plans, predictability, and plot on. Indeed, my Fuhrer, the plan is self-evident in its value. Had we completed the fortifications, rather than resting on our laurels prematurely, the Soviets would never have been able to regroup and push us back, and Himmler's failed coup would have never even begun. Late as we are, completing the line is the only way we ensure the Russians never have a chance to take, retake Moscow. The Fuhrer thought that Shona's concern had little to do with the ideology or national security, and much more to do with the influence he would gain with the troops on the Eastern Front. The line may have some strategic value, but it would surely be outweighed by the colossal cost of building a wall across the whole continent. Not to mention the cost of refusal. You can see the spiteful look in Shona's eye, even on the best of days. And I no desire to know him further. Fine, take your money. No extra funding will be authorized. Take your money! Second rate! Have you seen these numbers, my Fuhrer? Stuttgart waved a folder like it was the only thing that mattered in the world. Of course I've seen them, Wilhelm. Have you spoken to Shona? You know I do my best to avoid that man at all costs. Then you know that this is a necessary sacrifice to prevent that ugly dude from getting any uglier. Goran shared a point of glance with the Reich's minister. That I understand, but there are steps that can be taken to mitigate the damage before he does. And if he seriously thinks this wall is a good investment, he's even dumber than I thought. Stuttgart's folder flopped to his side limply. He has nothing of the sort, and you would be a fool to let him hear you say that Goring's glance turned into a glare. Stuttgart held up his hand in resignation. All I'm saying is, we could stand to save a great deal of materials. Do we really need to waste high-quality concrete and steel in a wall that the Russians will never reach? We could stand to dilute what Shona's boys get. They'll never be in a position to notice a difference. Perhaps Stuttgart did have a point. While Shona himself would almost certainly make note of the change in the supply situation, and you have to have that conversation with the bastard. The chances of the Russians pulling together enough to pose a true threat to the AA line, pure concrete or aggregated, were minuscule. Every penny counted, uh, considering the weight he was, or considering the amount he was already spending on the oversized Wehrmacht. Make the changes. Only the best for our boys. What well, doesn't really matter? Mm, do we want to save a buck or two? I do want more loyalty, so. Ah, who cares about the economy? Even though I'm going to say. We need to focus on the economy more, soon. As you can see, we're taking out Central Asia because we need to. Because, yes. Advanced AFE chassis. Uh, I'll never use these, honestly. And armored cars, you know what? We might make them for, yeah, maybe not. I don't know, we'll see. Uh, regardless, APCs, do we have those uh, boys here and there? We got some ships we gotta fix. Um, advanced infantry. 
Uh, close out of that. Do we need uh, APCs? Yeah, maybe battle tanks. That's fine. Close out of that one. AFVs don't really need that one. Oh, advanced APC APCs. Advanced APC chassis. Ooh, nine defense, fifteen breakthrough. Also, we do have a cup of coffee here too. Twelve to eighty percent. Fifteen breakthrough. How much? Hmm. Because right now we're the main battle tank. As much as I want the Google Pants, uh, I don't think we really need it. Super heavy tank. Proof heavy tank. Good armored car. Improved advanced, so. Um. Can we, oh! The APC. Can we actually. How much organization does this have? Uh, doesn't say. This one has. Well, let's see. Can we upgrade this regardless? Because I actually have not looked at this in a while. Wheel track. Track suspension, a bogey suspension. I like more speed personally. That's not bad. How do you know, hydro pneumatic suspension, huh? Riveted armor. Cast armor. Of course, these are APCs. Aren't these the ones that we want to use on our stuff here? Uh, reliability goes down. Fuel usage goes way up. Gasoline. Versus engine versus turbine. That's reliability. Well, that's good enough for now. Save that for now. Because um, our tank divisions, we do use APCs, so we should probably make them at least halfway decent, should we not? Ooh, no weapon. Oh man, piercing. Breakthrough. Modern, improved. Advanced infantry support gun. Uh, yeah. Radio. And we have enough stats or enough army XP that I don't mind using this. A little more armor. Oh, more recon's interesting. Crew heater. Interesting. More reliability, huh? Spend a fuel capacity. Fuel usage goes. Actually, fuel usage goes down. Honestly, let's try that out. Secondary turrets, don't really care about special modules or where, we're, where it's really at. Stabilizers, more breakthroughs, nice. Uh, reconnaissance. Mm, even more reliability is not bad. Dozer, blazer. Commander's optics. Uh, less reliability. Breakthrough, even more armor. I don't hurt reliability that much though. Yes, and we have the radio, so crew heater, stabilizer. Ooh, it's too much, too much, too much. There you go. Advanced APCs. So, can we replace that one now? I'm sorry I'm taking so long with this. Uh, improved APC chassis. Advanced APCs. There you go. Now we're making none. No factories assigned. Well, you might have to give it a day, but it's at the end of May as well, so. Army funding is really hurting the production of this, but whatever. Contribute. No production. Cost 13 production. We can produce none during the year. Oh god. And inflation is actually having a bad effect on us as well. So, go figure. And as time goes on, it's only going to get laggier and laggier and laggier. Oh, so there goes military factors. Oh, military factors for that, which is not ideal. We can't really spare too many more either. Anti tank stuff. Uh, go down by two more. At least are we making some APCs? Not yet. Ooh, where are we at? 25. Yeah, I definitely need quite a few of those and quite a few of that, so... Ah, oh, the economy, man. The economy. I don't want to take any off jet fighters. We need more leopards anyways, so... So we're hurting a little bit here, you know? Keep going on him. Look at all that lag. I thought I said Nokia first. Nokus. Alright, you go in there and take him out. Have fun with that. And here we really care about? Not really. We're going to save our PP for now. Still 4242. Uh, calm the Russians. 
crack down on the partisans. Uh, we're doing alright with the full rot. Corruption here, I mean, it's not bad. There's no corruption, there's no concern. Increase the loyalty of the militarists. I wouldn't mind that actually too badly. Increases our debt a little bit more, which is not great. I uh, don't really need to do it, don't really need to do it. Decrease power of the militarists. Decrease loyalty. More factory output, which wouldn't be bad, but. I'm going to close out of that one from now, close out of this one. Kriegsmarine, this is glitched or something, we can't even use it. But the parachute's obsolete still, as we read earlier. Very good, very good, very good, very good, very good. And I believe I read this one earlier too, you know, from the dense, jungle, dense African jungle. To the sprawling fields of Russia, Lvava shall reign supreme. Regardless of the terrain, our fighter pilots will maneuver through the skies to annihilate all those who stand in opposition to Germany, of course. Because why wouldn't they? Ah. Very good. And where are you at? Um, oh, Einsatzkommando will. Unfortunately, I can't convert you to anything else. And your division template is... Uh, sky helicopters. Nothing there. Air assaults. Medvac. It is what it is. You take what you can get, I guess. So we're slowly still trying to take these guys out. Oh. Peace conference. Thank you. It's very quite laggy. It is unfortunate. Calculating effects. Wow, this is very laggy. Oh, good God. Ah, the Kazakh National Republic is gone. As it should be. Honestly, here, just do this. Make it easier. Um, where are you guys? You guys are over there. You guys are over there. You just stay right here. It's fine for now. You guys go over here and do that. Take them out. Good luck, y'all. We may need it. Negative two percent, not great. Still a surplus. Inflation's dropped down a little bit more, which is good. Um, growth is just not very high. Why would it be? False Omega Ascendant. The German paratroopers are some of the most highly trained, highly specialized soldiers. They are a credit to their nation, to the race, and to the Fuhrer. Much of their job is, of course, done in the air. That is why they are members of the Luftwaffe, of course. But the paratroopers also maintain the ability to put up a fight on the ground. Not being members of the Hale, these men are furthermore much more willing to do their duty and follow the orders of the Fuhrer and even above Shona. Naturally, such talented and loyal individuals de deserve nothing less than the best from the nation. Goring has arranged for the paratroopers to receive only the best equipment and training, even when such things would not be beneficial to the regular mission of a paratrooper. Despite the blade and favoritism being shown, it is clear to the Fuhrer that this is a necessary measure. If the Hale's loyalty to Goring falls into question, there will be friendly boots on the ground in the skies of Germania. New gunships. It has been uh, very, been years since the one could afield a proper air force using only planes, but that is the assumption that the Reich seems to have been making. As technology has adapted and grown, the Luftwaffe has remained rather stagnant in terms of new advances, with the bureaucrats in Germania unwilling to devote the time, funds, and energy to make Germania rule the skies once more. This lethargy, of course, has ended as soon as Goring has assumed the title of Fuhrer. With a truly experienced and knowledgeable man in command of the Reich, the German people will begin crafting and implementing helicopters, gunships, and other more effective means of air combat into our engine of warfare. With a fully updated, outfitted, and um, upgraded Luftwaffe, there's not a chance that the German Reich can lose to the degenerates with combat superiority. Heil Goring. Beautiful. Uh, there you go. Uh... Honestly? We're done making our tank divisions for now. We'll make better ones. I want a lot of false Omegas. Why not use them? You know, we got them. Might as well use them, right? That's right. This anything here besides just ship stuff? That's right. Plenty of extra ships here, and uh, we actually oh, more battle ships too. Beautiful. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Beautiful. Lovely. Go ahead. And head on over. As we're still trying to take out everybody here, and then attrition is god awful, of course, but you know, what else is new? Attrition up here is god awful as well, but we're dealing with it. Don't worry about the whole poverty thing, that's all, it's all a lie, like I said before. Um, uh, assume Spec Ops Burden. Naturally, those Germans who work in special operations divisions are the best, most talented soldiers that Germany can field, having a degree of boldness and patriotism that impresses even the Fuhrer. However, these talented individuals have wasted away under the mismanagement of the Hale and Kriegsmarine. Not enough funding is given to them, nor do the military and naval officers seem to understand the burden that special operations soldiers carry. 
Surely the Reich's best and brightest are to continue their missions. A change must be made. Our magnificent Fuhrer, however, has come up with a solution. All existing spec op divisions within the Wehrmacht are to be folded into the administration of the Luftwaffe. After all, it is the Reich's Air Force that truly recognizes skill and dedication. Required to succeed at such specialized tasks. Additionally, because of Goring's service, he knows the officer corps of the Luftwaffe best and can easily vouch for the competence and incorruptibility of truly the Fuhrer. Let's come up with the, the ideal solution to this problem. So increase the amount of special forces we can support by 20%. That's actually really awesome. That's actually really, really cool. Beautiful. Okay, right now, we're mess missing a lot of attack helicopters and main battle tanks and transport helicopters. Not ideal. Um, we don't need these properly. Building harbors are fine. We need casts. God, do we need, definitely need cast. Trains are okay. Should I even kill them all, man? That's all I have to do. Boschum Jäger Ascendant. Oh, a little bit of lag. And, uh, you know what? We're going to go with Volkswissenschaft. Everyone likes to think about the military applications of technology, but far too few, including the Fuhrer, it seems. I'll have to consider the civilian benefits of the new knowledge. Um... Uh, Chemicals are great at causing chaos and death amongst enemies, but can they not also improve our crops? The atom can be split to destroy entire cities, but can it not also power them? Herr Ausenberg is smart enough to realize that putting all of his technological eggs in one basket is a foolish idea. At the same time, however, he realizes that given the martial bent of our current regime, we will have to carefully tailor the applications of his ideas so that they might actually serve more military minor purposes, if only to get the projects approved, of course. The power of the atom, huh? Biology and application. The field of biology has been progressing ever since so rapidly in the last two decades since the Second World War. While we may have not always prioritize the bi biological fields during that time, we were able to learn our, enough ourselves and steal from our rivals enough to develop increasingly sophisticated pesticides, hormones, and even new synthetic chemicals. Despite some objections within the GRWI due to the still unclear side effects of many of these substances, the Führer has eschewed several directives related to their use. The farmers will be given batches of experimental pesticides and GMOs for practical testing. There are some uncertainties here, but science cannot move forward without the bravery to venture into the unknown. A little bit more cost for 90 days, that's okay. Add GMO testing, it'll be very good. And agriculture begins to improve. Where there's a whip, there's a way. Amen. Vadim's shoulders burn as he swung his mattock. The icy Russian soil refused to give in easily. The consultant move, constant move, of uh, the cartwheels and cap caterpillar tracks had churned up thick wet mud that over repeated cycles uh, freezing and thawing it could half a dozen layers of frozen ground that was closer to rock than dirt a little extra strength would be appreciated preferably that um, of a jackhammer or one of those excavators you see on the back of the German trucks but those were too valuable to be risked in the unscowed hands of a conscript such as himself Vadim allowed himself a brief moment to catch his breath and wipe the sweat from his brow which had gathered there despite the cloud breath produced in the cold as he breathed he surveyed the horizon from his action in the section of the would-be trench, half sunk into the earth. He could see but a small segment of the fortification's extent. He'd never seen anything like it. He'd heard tales of distant China, where great walls separated the civilized world from those barbarians of the north. This was the only comparison he could even consider irrelevant, for as far as I could see, and from what he'd heard a thousand times further, yet more. Russians like him labored at digging trenches, cutting down forests, draining swamps, hanging barbed wire, installing bunkers, fortifying choke points, building the wall the likes of which the world had never seen before. Uh, what's the holdup? Ruski, he, his reverie was interrupted by a barking German. Outside the trench, as the soldier supervising his group was looking down at him and idly playing with the action of his rifle. Just catching my breath, sir, he replied in rudimentary German. But Vadim swallowed as the soldier walked to the lip of the trench. Seeing his discomfort, the German chuckled and spat into the trench, nearly missing Vadim. Back to work. No one thinks it breaks. Vadim nodded, relieved he had avoided a beating. Vadim's shoulders burned as he swung his, uh, mattock. These states have also had the population subdued by the army, giving a 5% bonus to non core manpower in them. Ooh, fantastic. Forts and manpower. We could really use them, especially to help put down uh, enemy resistance. Oh my god. Oh my god. God. Nutrition is so bad here. There you go. Now uh, the Americans are here too, which is giving us a little bit of trouble as well, I bet. Ah, dockyards, yes. Advanced battleship hull B. Sure, why not? Good. Because the American and Japanese navies are going to need to be taken out some way, somehow. So. 
Good God, it's so laggy. Oh, we probably should get better uh, carry versions too, right? I always forget about this. Oh yeah, definitely, 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 definitely. Volkswissenschaft. Good, good. Is that it for them? Oh, I this got dinged out too, huh? Oh, that might be it for them, yes. It took us down, Legion. Very good. Let's get to Ashgabat. Please. And thank you. Can you not just go here? Uh, I guess not, huh? There you go. Uh, and for the plants. Oh, with the conversation. In with innovation. It's nothing but scientific progress for the gross Germanic Reich. So why should the Reich's produce and plants always be exempt from progress? To truly allow the Aryan race to triumph over our inferior contemporaries, we must ensure that every plant in the Reich is stamped with a swastikum. Thus, as mentioned, as best we put genetically uh, modified organisms, GMOs, in all the Reich's plants, we shall eat fight for the future. This report was not sponsored by agricultural concerns in any way. Allegations of corruption, mismanagement of funds, or bribery constitute slander and will be investigated accordingly. Even more agriculture uh, development. Better multi-population, better recruitable population. Fantastic, but centralized civilian research. The field of civilian research isn't as interesting or supported as the various military branches of the Greater German Reich Council on Scientific Innovation, but the General Secretary is treating it as they would a real problem. Some of the civilian research divisions are still holding out, though, refusing to share their design work with the rest of the GRWI. The General Secretary wishes. Oh. My apologies. Uh, the solution to be, or situation to be resolved, but involving the Fuhrer would result in a maximum force solution, and somehow uh, someone would likely be arrested or shot. Get going on the telephone. You will break them. Ooh, but need to consume his goods goes down too. Oh, well, hello. Do we have. What? Tajik State? Uh, I don't think so. Excuse me. Um, excuse me, y'all. The Yankees opposes again. Oh. It's laggy is because something else the anti malware service on my computer is running again. God, I hate Windows Defender sometimes. I really do. Is that enough to destroy them? Please let me know. Oh, it should be very good. Happy August, everybody. Finally. Um, in all honesty, where are you at? There you go. I just have you guys do it. Just come over here. Take them all out like that. That'd be nice. Thank you. Uh. Come back home. That'd be ideal. Very good. Biology and application. And the troops. Hmm. Much like our employment of Perverton in the 40s, Fall Gelb Operation guaranteed a lightning victory against the Reich's various opponents. Perhaps a mass consumption of performance enhancing drugs and substances will prove to the to better the standing in uh, battle readiness of the, the German Wehrmacht. Thus, it's best we explore this concept by testing supposed performance enhancing drugs on already competent soldiers. This will surely make them competent in even greater measure, granting them combat strength and focusing their abilities to supreme extents. What could possibly go wrong? Nothing. That's right. Look the aisles, huh? Just hurry up and kill them all off, please. The Americans have already made it here. Oh, and he called everyone else, and no, that makes sense. Oh, God. There you go. That's better. Oh, Bruce Scott Heli. Let's see. There you go. They're attacking us as well, huh? Oh, the Americans, huh? They are in mountains and 
We can pierce him, which is good, but still. Rex Commissariat Turkestan. Led by Eckhart Afheld. Good. It will be ours. Ooh. 1970s nuclear carrier reactor. Yes, please. Keep butchering them. We've lost 500 versus 8,000. Not enough. And we have them, my friends. Finally. Full rot. We're fine with that. GRWI. Looking perfect. Spending a lot of money on it, as we should, of course. Alright, so you guys do this. Um, I want to get him out of all the areas there that could be lots and lots of attrition. Do that for now. I want you all to get right here, too. Work from home. Vadim and I have been leaving the trenches for weeks, of course. He and the other conscripts have been thrown a tar a tarpaulin and were expected to make do. Uh, the dribble of rain pushing its way through the gaps in the sheeting draped over the squalid hole had turned the freshly excavated dirt back straight into mud, and most of his comrades had taken a sleeping upright to avoid drowning in mud, of course, uh, propped up by their tools. Well, it was mostly mud. The digging of latrines had been deemed a secondary priority compared to the main fortifications, and there were a few Russians willing to leave the trench at night when a trigger-happy German might take a simple toilet break for an escape attempt. If a demon poked his head out from under the tar tarpaulin, he could see the corpse pile. He could smell it no matter where he was. The Germans kept separate from the Russians in their tents, but Vadim had been able to overhear a few words while on duty. Most of the soldiers assumed the Russians were incapable of understanding their language, despite the fact that half, around half the conscripts were a Muscovite, and many of the others had picked up smatterings of the trade language that had built up around what used to be the border between Muscovine uh, uh, and Russia. Despite the brutal punishments that were being dealt with increasing irregularity to the lazy workers, work was apparently proceeding, proceeding according to schedule. Once the work was done, Russia would be split into two, uh, with the border not nearly so poor as it had preceded it. What would become of him then? Shipped out to another conflict, to dig holes and to live in his own crap, or just dispose of fa under the face in the corpse pile? There must be some way out, some path between the sentries that would take him away. They wouldn't bother searching for him once he was out. He was all but worthless. That much was clear, but which way? Back west into Muscovine, and hoped to remain unnoticed by his authorities, or east into Russia, where who knows what awaited him. He'd heard that the Soviet Union was restored in the Far East, but then he'd also heard about bandits masquerading as Germans who would slaughter anyone they deemed too Russian. The crack of a distant gunshot reached the trench, and a few of the others shifted into their sleep. Vadim's grip tightened around his mattock and dreamed of freedom. Today, you, tomorrow, me. But now another division. Yes, please. I hear of importance. No, no, no. Uh, well, nothing's really changed here too much. Scandinavia, huh? Or the Isles. Scandinavia looking nice and thick. They don't get any more stability, unfortunately, neither do they. Muscovine. They get weekly manpower, which is actually really good for them. They don't get weekly stability. Oh, yes, they do. Oh, yes, they do. Muscovine, huh? Oh, I can't do Muscovine anymore. Dang it. Ukraine. Ukraine, Isles, Balkans, Scandinavia. Negative 27%. Uh, nope. Happy September, though, everybody. Happy, happy September. Quite laggy, but that's all right. Do we get a core of this, or what do we get to do with this? I guess we we'll have to look at the next focuses, because I don't remember what we do here. Three seventy point three seven for uh, this up here, which is not bad. We're gonna do the for the plants as well. Um, finish them off. All countries do not exist. Oh, do we have to kill someone else off here or something? Ooh. Well, I think it was earlier too. Well, most of Russia under control, we can launch the final offensive against the Siberian warlords. We need to be careful about the extreme weather and logistics. But once we prepare, our enemy will crumble easily. After all, Siberia is a depopulated region without any meaningful industrial development. Their army will melt like snow in front of the Wehrmacht, and their hopes will be crushed like the brittle glass by the hammer of the Reich. All these countries are dead. That's Russian, Russian National Reconstruction Committee. Um. Weird. They're all dead. I don't see anything else around here that could stop us from doing that. It makes no sense. I 
I may have to go off screen and do that anyways, but still the seeds. With most of the rush under control, the few pitiful remnants were cowering in fear of our war machine, like the cowards they are. It's time to launch the last propaganda initiative, where we'll try to convince as many as possible to deserve and either join our cause or simply stand idle as the last vestiges of Bolshevism are utterly crushed. Even if they don't revolt against commanders, every deserter is one less Russian to fight, now that there are many left ready to fight, of course. And drive them into the sea. The time for the final push has come. Our Panzer Division shall route the powerful leftovers of Russian warlords towards the ocean, where they won't have anywhere else to retreat. Let's see how many will be ready to jump into the sea and commit the ultimate sacrifice for the ideology. I have the suspicion that very, very few will. After all, Bolsheviks are known for cowardice, of course. Um, I do like this one. National Socialism stands triumphant. Siberia was a home to several movement or sympathizing with National Socialism. By defeating the last remnants of the Soviet Union, we've undoubtedly proved the superiority of our ideology compared to the corrupt scions of Marx and Engels. If we play our cards right, we can motivate several such movements to join our cause, and while they'll never be proper Aryans, they'll make fine collaborators when we integrate these lands into the Great Reich and threaten the Japanese. With the recent expansion, we've come to border the Japanese in the East. Our former allies might protest and ask for their former position back. After all, when they ceded it to the Russians, they didn't expect us to conquer it, but now it's too late to ask for its return. All of Russia has been conquered. Uh, by the German might, and no one will stand against it. Perhaps stationing a couple of nuclear missiles near the border will keep the Japanese in check so they don't go ahead of themselves, won't it? So, here we have it, everybody. We're now going in, hopefully going to beat the crap out of the Siberian Federation, led by Alexander Pokurishkin, the Siberian Falcon. He's got quarter million manpower max, up so many divisions max, and we called in our allies, and they've already suffered 27,000 casualties. Not bad, because for a celebration. Oh. Oh. The Germans were drunk as heck, high on the accomplishments of others. For the first time in what felt like weeks, Vadim had been allowed a break, for there was no more work to do. He and his Russian comrades, for all the hard work, had been rewarded respite, a chance to lean on their shelves and gaze at the miles of trenches they dug by hand. Vadim could have done with one mother beer as the soldiers were passing around, but for now he was just grateful to have good, clean water. The radio was blaring out some patriotic German song, immediately followed by a speech by Fuhrer Goring, congratulating the troops and laborers. The German laborers, of course, were on the completion of what he referred to as the Eighth Wonder of the World, the Archangelsk Astrakhan Line. The division of Germany and Russia was now a sharp line on the map rather than the blur it had once been. And what many of the young Russians considered a small golden age of enterprise compared to the Union and Reich that sandwiched them. The only enterprise getting done these days certainly wasn't setting the profits his way. He sipped his water and for the moment content. His shoulders no longer ached. He surveyed the wilderness expense of the east, nothing but fields as far as the eye could see, no cover. Nothing but easy shooting should some a-hole look up from his drinking and back to his duties, but still, there was no time left. They were moving out soon. The best one could see was a gully a few hundred meters away leading southeast. If he could reach there in a couple of hours, when drinking and darkness dulled their senses, he might be able to crawl out of sight. The rumble of a truck interrupted his thoughts and he turned. The truck was backing up into a trench where his comrades were enjoying the rest. Soldiers, a rival shoulder and looking much more sober than their drunken friends, were accompanying them. Ruskies in the truck. Next project. Vadim gazed into the back of the truck like it was a gaping pit. He was out of time. I wonder what I'll be when they open the door. Remove building new A-line. Beautiful. But we'll see how long these guys last because, I guarantee you, they ain't gonna last long. We want the airbase. Oh, yeah. Just drop them like the flies. 59,000 losses already. Not enough yet, of course, but, you know, it is a small start. Oh, not bad. Uh, damaging us a little bit, but we'll get there. Ace pilot promoted, very good, very good, very good. So we should be moving across the entire front. Oh, back up to 40, 4 million. Almost don't have even, even years of plus. We've been trying to maximize our science expenditures as well. So, anti guerrilla activities, that's going to be very important for us. Uh, we're going to continue with this as well. As we're building up more roads, we're building some air bases, a supply depot. You know, good stuff like that. Uh, we, stop, we told the Navy to stop working on stuff right now. The air is doing okay. Army needs way more fuel, but... That is also why we're here. Better sub stuff. That's nice. Naval stuff. Here. Go and grab that too. Um, I want you guys to go here. Find him and destroy him. So how much have we lost? So the seeds, of course, is sown our 14,000. It's not bad. And... Uh, advanced cruiser holes would be very nice as well. Happy November, everybody. And we're slowly trying to push into good old uh, oh, Russia. Advanced cruiser holes, huh? 12,000 range, 130 HP, armor is 6. Production cost almost 3,400. Not bad overall. Cool. Stability and whatnot would be nice. Uh, military demands. Go into that one. Why not? 
All right, do them all. We need more money. Our economy is slightly shrinking as our deficit is slowly increasing. And you find some people, you get rid of them, you know? Good. So let's go take a while to get done. 66,000 losses. They actually might already be out of manpower. Uh, they actually have quite a bit still left, which is not good for them. Not for us, but whatever. Um, so we're going to get all of this stuff done. Happy November 6th, everybody. Still those plant ones to do. Uh, throw in the Japanese, which we did as well. And the end of the Rus, the victory at last. With a complete conquest of Russia, the German Reich proves once more its might against those who once dare to stand defiant for the glory of the eagle and the swastika. The Russian people is no more either assimilated, enslaved, or driven into the wilderness to fight like the rats they are. A grand triumph shall be held in Germania. All the military leaders shall be present alongside the Führer for his momentous occasion, where the power of the Reich shall be exposed for all to see. Heil Dusselreich, Heil Germania, Heil Goring, which we actually get 1.5% more GDP growth, which is fantastic. Increased liquid reserves by a billion, poverty gets better, and Reich Commissar at uh, just does very well. Oh, it's a billion, minus 60%, removed continued resistance, oh god. 100, oh, minus 100% war support, holy crap, that's a lot. Good lord. That's 1972, huh? Semi-modern stealth fighter. That's kind of cool, actually. Uh, sure. Why not? And I'm sure we got some planes we want to improve upon, right? Yes. Yes. We drive them into the sea, my friends. Because that is where they belong. What is this one? Operation Gertrude. Beyond the Balkans lies Turkey, formerly an ally of ours, and then of Italy, but no more. Turkey now stands alone in a land of mountains, rivers, and a race of questionable worth for centuries. The Turks were the greatest threat to European civilization, and their perfidy and barbarism matched only by the unwashed hordes of Russia. There were always Aryan heroes who rose to defend Europe from these mongrels of Islam, such men such as Vlad the Impaler and Jean Hunyadi. But still, the Turks endure, never loosening their clammy grip on the southeastern Balkans. Their the Allies, despite butchering our empire after the Great War, allow the Turkish nation to continue existing, so presumably to some dastardly Zionist end. No more shall this insult stand, or fewer sins shall forever end this uh, end forever end this unnatural state of affairs and restore Klein Azin to European control. Over the sea, navy across mountains. I will probably do it across the mountains. So if you wonder about over the seas, please go ahead. There's this one, storming the beaches, strike their industry. Uh, we'll probably do across the mountains, though, in all honesty. OKW has spoken. The mountains are the most direct and least risky avenue of invasion. With the fear's approval, plans are being drawn up for an assault staged from our bases north of the Caucasus. The generals warn of Kosh, however. The mountain ranges and narrow passes will largely negate our numerical advantage, forcing us to rely on more focused breakthroughs forces or find some way to circumvent such obstacles. Despite their origin in the barbarous steppes of Central Asia, the Turks are mountain people, through and through. We must be wary of any tricks they might have picked up over the last few centuries. This is a relatively unfamiliar territory for the, for the Wehrmacht, and Lufthansa's ability to provide air support will be stymied. Thorough planning and discipline will be of the utmost importance in this campaign, of course. Good. Oh, deficit not good, not good. We need that 1.5% growth, please. Let's give him a little more run for our money than I would have liked. Well, that's alright. We are at a quarter million losses. It's going to take a while to get rid of these guys. Oh, I hate it. We drive them into the sea. At least working on it. Um, what's this one next? I want to go plant one. And the, or the troops one. And uh, what about the water? Regrettably, the liquid life. Liquid of life. It doesn't exactly do much in the way of battle. Let's change that, shall we? Indeed, the time has come to wonder what about the water, and make it useful in our success as a nation. It is therefore necessary, with a formal recommendation of the GRWI, that the government begin to pump fluorine, the most electronegative element, into the Reich's water supply. We have undertaken this despite considerable protest from our nation's private sector, who claim it will destroy the toothpaste industry. We have assured our uh, fear goring that fluorine will deliver improved health and, more importantly, keep the population docile and also prevent tooth decay. A little more money spending, but we're under Goring's leadership, so what do you expect? And then, uh, super heavy battleships? The average battleship is a king of the sea, a gigantic creation of steel and fire that can crush enemies for miles away. The Kriegsmarine already has many of these behemoths, but the Ringhorn Doctrine calls for a creation that dwarfs even though these monsters, the super heavy battleship. 
Outfitted with the largest guns of the right cast, covered in the thickest armor belts we can create. These giants shall be the crowning piece of the new Kriegsmarine, the average battleship, are as glorious and valiant as they are, have their own drawbacks such as the poor accuracy range and a susceptibility to torpedo attacks. With new advancements in gunnery combined with the strongest armor on Earth, both these problems shall no longer be a concern. The super heavy battleship will make an average battleship look like a mere cruiser, and our opponents shall stare in awe at the sheer capabilities of the Kriegsmarine as their shells rain down upon them from miles away, and their battleships are our cruisers. And the rest upsize our ships. Uh, much effort has been focused on the capital ships of the Kriegsmarine, however. Once we cannot forget the humble cruiser, which once again requires our attention if we wish to keep all of our navy to doctrine. Under the Ringhorn Doctrine, we shall turn our cruisers from mere screening ships to battleships in their own right, able to destroy any skirmishing force that dares come in after it. Our cruisers shall be equal to their battleships, and they'll no longer even have a chance to come after our own capital ships. After all, there may be less glory in the life of a cruiser crew, but they're certainly not less important. With these improvements, uh, our cruisers can and certainly will take the rightful part of the glory of the new Kriegsmarine and Jimin Leviathans. The word is out about the grand, brand new Kriegsmarine, and a wave of terror swept through our enemies. Our spies report hurried panic meetings between admirals in Norfolk and Tokyo, exactly as we expected. One cannot blame them for their panic. We certainly would not have any less uneasy if Japan or America had rolled out such powerful ships as we have. They're right to huddle in terror, of course. Our fleets are nearly impenetrable. Our cruisers can shatter any skirmishing force. Our capital ships can single-handedly level fleets and cities alike, and our cruisers are the best in the world, with such power at our disposal. One has to wonder what a nation could do to resist such an overwhelming force. Indeed, it seems at this point only a nuclear strike could destroy our ships. What have the Japanese and Americans decided on doing? It's clear that the Greek Marine is the new king of the seas. Our people cheer and shout as the ships sail by, knowing that the Greek Reich is the greatest nation on Earth. But I'm going to end it there and finish the rest of this Russian war off screen. It's just taking a while, and with the Windows Defender running in the background, it's very, very laggy. And honestly, I wish it wasn't so laggy, but that's just me and my computer. But if you enjoyed the video, though, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as I see what else we can do. As a GGR, thanks for watching. Have a tremendous Einheitspack rest of your day.